1972, most Americans were either pretty happy or very happy, while the real GDP per capita was as high as that of Turkey today. However, economic growth boosted the wealth of the United States over the last 40 years. Today, the country is three times as rich. So, was this enough to eliminate unhappiness completely? No, on the contrary, people reported roughly the same level of happiness in 2016. What? Three times the wealth didn't make people any happier? Oh, wow. Now you may wonder whether this little problem only affects US or also other countries. What are the reasons for it? And how about the impasse? You are right here for the answers at Practical Philosophy. Today it's all about the relationship between happiness and income slash wealth slash GDP. Or more precisely, the Easterlin paradox. But let's get some perspective first. Of course, people in rich countries tend to live happier lives than people in poor countries. We can clearly see on the map that countries in Europe, North America and Australia are far better off than those in Africa and Asia. However, that is just a correlation. The really interesting question is whether countries that get richer become happier along the way. Otherwise, what is the point in boosting economic growth? Now we have already seen that happiness hasn't increased in the United States in the last 40 years. But the United States were already quite rich in 1970, so maybe we should really look at a different example. Let's look at a country that jumped from low income to middle income in just 25 years. Yeah indeed, I'm talking about China. That is Shanghai in 1990. And here you see the same place in 2012. But that is not all. Millions of people have escaped poverty and most of the urban population has access to wonderful electronic devices like computers, washing machines and fridges. Real GDP increased fivefold in just 25 years. But what about happiness? Oh yeah, well, actually it's not that amazing. It first went down a bit and then up again, but it's not really a great increase in total. Actually, some sources even claim that happiness has decreased overall during this time span. If you want to dig deeper, please check out the sources in the description below. We will move on now to the conclusion of the first part. Mr. Easterlin looked at many other countries as well and concluded that the paradox holds true for industrial as well as emerging nations. There seems to be no connection between wealth and happiness after a certain level of income is reached. And of course, Easterlin is frequently criticized by other scholars but even after celebrating his 90th birthday, he is still writing more papers to defend his paradox. Hence, the debate will likely continue, but we shall leave it for now. Consider subscribing and stay tuned for the follow-up videos about the reasons and the impacts. And until then, farewell.